Hello and welcome to another edition of Real Lives and today we're talking to the lovely Emma Henderson who is a Reiki master, psychotherapist and angel card reader. Hi Emma, how are you today? Hi, I'm good, how are you? I'm great. It's such wonderful weather here at the moment in the south. I know, it's beautiful. We're so lucky. It is. We are, we are. Tell me about Reiki. For those that haven't experienced it or um, just heard the word but don't really know what it is, how would you explain it? So I'm a Reiki master and I've been practicing Reiki for over 12 years. So Reiki is a hands-on energy healing um, so a person will lie fully clothed in a bed and I use a process. I learn to bring in energy and it basically balances people's chakras passing over the body or maybe lightly touching the body and um, working from the head to the feet. So it's an energy that brings in balance. And most of all, most of my clients come to me with stress and anxiety or things. They just they don't feel good. And at the end of it, they feel much more relaxed. I'm much more able to make clearer decisions. So it's kind of an energy clearing process or energy clearing therapy. So it's very relaxing. Sounds sounds great. At the moment, because of COVID, which is affecting yeah. the whole world, and we are in lockdown um, in France, but also I know other places in lockdown as well. I know that you're mm. doing um, distance healing. So, so yeah. how does that actually work? So when you learn Reiki, um, you learn it to be in person, but you also learn um, a certain set of processes to do it as a distance. So distance healing, um, you set your intention to work with a client at a particular time and they have to be in a state to receive it, relaxed. And you, you, set, you set your intention to send them the same energy. And, you know, at first you're like, is this working? You don't know. But the more clients I have, the more I know they feel it, they report Straight away afterwards, they feel much lighter, much better, much clearer. Same as in person. Now, some people before this wouldn't like distance Reiki. They're like, no, I prefer it in person. But yeah. now they can't get out to see somebody face to face. So they're, they're trying it and they're like, oh, it's actually just the same. Nearly. I feel great. They, you know, they have great feeling afterwards and they feel much lighter and refreshed. So for me, it's great because clients are willing to try it because, you know, they're stressed and distance Reiki. They get to stay in their own home. And experience Reiki from a distance without the risk of interacting with another mm. person. So for me, it's it's been good because more and more clients are are giving it a go, and um, and now I have regulars who who prefer it because they just um, are in another country or or they they prefer to be at home at this time. So yes, yeah, and I think at this time it's it's really important to remember that we need, still need to look after ourselves. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, even though probably more so really because we're not able to get out and about so much and we're not socialising so much and we're not having the interaction with other people, which in itself yeah. can be stressful. So, exactly, yeah. yeah. And there's a lot of fear out there. So this yeah. Reiki session just make people feel more relaxed and more in tune with themselves and they're not as worried as before. You know, a lot of people are very much in their heads about things. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. And just ta just taking time out to to relax down in itself is is, yeah. is extremely healing, isn't it? Yeah. And it's only afterwards they have the session. They're like, oh, I need to do this more regularly because they didn't yes. realize how much they needed it. So that's yes. it. Yes, yeah. definitely worth exploring, especially in these times. Yeah. So how, how tell me, how did you uh, become a Reiki master? What um, led you to um, well, study in Reiki? I'd, um, I'd never heard of Reiki before. I was living in London and um, I'd read about it in a magazine. And um, mm. at the time I was stressed. I was in a stressful job and I wasn't feeling great. And I just just seemed to bounce out of a magazine page at me. And I was like, I don't know what this is, but I'm going to find somewhere. And it just so happened it came out of a tube station and there was a, a therapy centre there. It was in Clapham, Clapham Common. And um, I went in and I... I didn't know what I was looking for, didn't know what I was going. And I found a lovely therapist and um, had a few Reiki sessions there. And I felt amazing. I was like, this is this is great. I love it. So I don't know what it is, mm. but it's great. Mm. So um, I moved to, to Canada and I found another therapist okay. there. And the same, same thing, lovely Reiki, lovely person, just really felt great afterwards. So when I moved back to Ireland, I tried Reiki again and then it was suggested why don't I just learn it I was like oh I don't know that sounds 
a bit advanced. But like, no, anyone can learn it. So it's it's a certain process you learn it. Um, yeah. So I did Reiki level one, Reiki level two, and then Reiki level three, which is the master level, and you're you're qualified to practice on other people. So I, I started from there. So that's that's about 12, 13 years ago. And mm. I've been doing Reiki since then. And I had been working in marketing and advertising. And okay. you know, I was doing it at, in the evenings, doing the Reiki and then the marketing job. But um, just the, the Reiki started to get busier for me. And I had a lot more clients. And then, you know, people were coming with more advanced problems that I was able to deal with. Um, so I decided to study psychotherapy because it seemed to complement me and complement the yes. clients that were coming. So I was much more equipped to deal with people's problems and I felt more comfortable because sometimes mm. some of the issues that are coming to me were way beyond what I was, you know, trained in. So mm. having the psychotherapy background, I'm much more comfortable. Um, you know, a lot of stuff comes up because sometimes Reiki can bring up an emotional release or people will tell you things I haven't told anybody else. It's like a counseling session in itself. So yes. I train to become a psychotherapist and that's really, really helped. So if anything comes up, you know, sometimes people want a half hour counseling session, half hour Reiki session, and that works just as well. Yeah. yeah. It's about uh, having yeah. um, a toolbox, isn't it, of um, yeah. uh, coping strategies that you can help used to help people uh, yeah. to discover themselves and help themselves. Yeah. And I can refer them on. I, I know, you know, what would be best for them. Should they see yes. a different type of therapist or should they look at body work or other types of things? So yeah. for me, it has helped given a, a much more rounded uh, yeah. holistic Which experience I, for them. The holistic being, being the right word. And I think it's also really important to be aware of there are so many different therapies out there and it is about finding what works for you because, yeah. um, you know, people, most people have heard of counselling and um, especially in the UK, people are sent to counsellors, um, which is which is great. Um, and, you know, for some people it works, but it doesn't work for everyone. No, so I think, no. you know, the more you learn about or find out about the different types of therapies out there, uh, the more you're able to to try for yourself and find the what works works for you because exactly. it's and not so individual and not to be yeah. afraid yeah so it's great that you're able to um, have an understanding of all the different therapies and suggest these therapies and explain these therapies to others because mm. um, mm. yeah, um, that's really what I find important. People, it is um, what I find with people who are very traumatized sometimes they're not even able to verbalize what is mm. up with them. And, you yeah. know, if you go to counsellor, first of all, the counsellor may want you to talk and maybe too hard for you to speak up. But I know when people come in mm. for Reiki, they don't have to talk. Yes. They can tell me a little bit about themselves. But after that, they say nothing. They lie in the bed. And, you know, the energy works whether they speak or not, where they believe in it or not. But at the end, they usually feel, oh, I, I, I feel a lot better or they have a, a release yes. or they have yes. a cry and, and they feel you know, sometimes vulnerable, but sometimes good because yes. they, they were able to get it out. And, you know, a few sessions of Reiki can lead to much more therapy for them, talk therapy, but at the start, they mm. might be able to speak. Mm. Or have I think the one of the things, yeah, one of the things to bear in mind is that as a child, a young child, you know, experiences get associated with emotions first because children do not have the language and the understanding to be able to vocalize what it is that they're experiencing so they feel it on an emotional level first mm -hmm. and then maybe some words will get associated with that so quite often the things we've experienced as children have been linked to an emotion so you know something might trigger that emotion and it's it appears to be inappropriate to feel mm -hmm. that emotion at that time but maybe mm -hmm. it's linked to something that you experienced as a young child Mm -hmm. um, so you're just experiencing that emotion where, you know, what you're doing with Reiki can allow uh, that energy and that understanding to be released, as you say. And then from there, you can then move into a therapy whereby you can yeah. talk about it and yeah. investigate it and explain it and understand it and put the yeah. words to it. So, you know, sure. from, from, from the point of view of needing a release. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, grief. Yeah. I've had a lot of women who have had miscarriages, who've lost their mother, or I mean, 
you know, sometimes they just can't speak about it. But with Reiki, it, you know, they, it's a safe space to allow that release, allow to cry without, yeah. you know, you don't have to talk about it either. Sometimes you just mm. let the release go and it, it's too much and they can come back for another session and another and then mm. they're more able to. So it, it, it's healing. It's about healing and giving them the space yeah. to, to release and giving them permission. Yeah. And it's a safe space. Yeah. And there's nothing it's, it's, to from them. Yeah, it's time. It's trust. It's yeah. Yeah, you know, but giving yourself that time to be able to just um, investigate your own thoughts and feelings, and yeah. and just allow it to to come up and and be dealt with, rather than you know plowing on through life, you know, regardless. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. No, so, so it's a healing healing therapy. Yeah. It is. Yes. Yes. So. Um, you also do angel card reading. You do. Which, so, so how did how did that come about? So, I think when I was do, after I was doing the Reiki, I just met different people, and it was suggested to me to why don't I learn the cards? Because I was seeing another Reiki therapist who would let me pick a card at the end of a session. I was like, oh, that's right. Nice. It's kind of it's a a nice way to sum up the healing. So, I went and I learned how to learn the cards. So that was probably 10 years ago. So sometimes I incorporate it into a, a Reiki session, but some people just book in directly for an angel card reading. Now, um, mm. angel card, it's it's tarot. It's, it's like tarot, but it's not. Um, I suppose they're a tool. Um, so yeah, they do angel card reading parties and it's just all fun and light and it's kind of gentle guidance from your guardian mm. angels. So Mm -hmm. uh, it's lovely to pick a card at the end of a session and sometimes it just brings up something that was mentioned when we talk about the healing mm -hmm. um so they're they're kind of nice gentle cards some people pick a card every day just for guidance or just for what else do I need to know is there something I need to be aware of but um yeah, I like them. yeah. clarity of thought that's uh, yeah yeah it definitely yeah. brings clarity yeah. it's similar to, to Reiki like when you're doing Reiki, you can pick up things from a client, you know, just intuitively. And sometimes the cards just, mm. when you deal the cards, you're like, oh, there it is. There's that message again, but in a different different yeah. word. So it, just, it yeah. helps bring clarity and healing and insight to people. Yes. So, um, yes. you know, similar to being face to face, I'm doing it over, over Skype and Zoom and WhatsApp video. I'm doing card reading. So some people, again, the same as Reiki. How could it work if I'm not in the room? But it still works. Mm, you, know, the, yes. you know the person in front of me um yes it, it's really nice um i don't know would you like to see one or two cards would you like to see what they're absolutely. about absolutely yes let's do it <laughs> okay just just for uh let's see i hope it's a good message um for I'm sure everyone it will be. listening let's see oh. this is a, a deck of cards it's called messages from your angels and there's text with this card. Some cards have no text on it and you can just read the picture. But this is a nice one. I just randomly picked. It says, you are protected from all types of harm. The worst is behind you. I ask you to relax and feel safe. That's a nice message. It's an excellent message, especially at the moment. Yeah, it's wonderful. Yeah. Yeah. And um, it's also about calling if you believe in angels or if you believe in protection or spirit. Just ask angels to surround your house and your home, surround your family. and just feel safe put them around every single window and door in your house and just imagine yourself in a protective bubble of life that's a wonderful image I have that image <laughs> that's great thank you yeah so how would people contact you if they want to um know more about what you do or they want a, a reiki session or a, a reading how do they contact you well they can visit your website the mind body academy Com. Mind, body, and soul academy. Yeah, mbsacademy.com. Yeah, and I'm on your website. Um, I'm also on Instagram. Um, I'm the Healing Room, so the underscore Healing Room, um, mm -hmm. and um, Twitter and Facebook. Just search for the Healing Room. Okay. Um, the, there will be links underneath this video if you're watching this on YouTube, um, and there will also be a card at the end of the video with the details on. Um, you know, or they can just go say, go to the website, uh, www.mbsacademy.com, um, and find you on there. Yeah, yeah. It's been it's been great to talk to you. 
Would you like to do just one more card for our, for our listeners yes. before you go? Yes, let's do it from a different pack. Um, okay. One with less warm. And let's All see right. what comes up. Let's hope. It's a good message. Okay, sure. well, this is a card. <laughs> I'm sure it is. Study. Study. And I think you've seen this before, haven't you, Jackie, this card? Oh, I have, yes. <laughs> it's probably a direct nudge for me. It probably is, actually. <laughs> yeah, it probably but, is, because, yeah. So this card, again, is about studying. So this card, um, there's lots of images in the card. So the word is study, but there's a little angel with rainbows coming out of her hands, but she's turning mm. away from her head is turning away from the rainbow. So this to me is the word study. Pay attention to your studies. The gifts are in your hand, but you're turning your head away. You're ignoring it. You're running away and you're going into the sunshine, going for walks without and not going to sit down and study. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. OK. All right. Hands up. That is definitely a card for me because, yeah, I do. I am halfway through a course that I haven't looked at for a long oh, time. So. Okay. So it's about yeah. grounding yourself. It's a nudge. Getting organised. Um, yeah, it's a gentle <laughs> nudge. And they're going to keep nudging you. Angels will keep nudging you and things will start coming up and turning on the telly and there'll be something there telling you, Jackie, study or, you know, or you're having dreams. So the more you do it, the better you'll feel. The Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Which, uh, as I said, uh, these cards, it's because, you know, I've, I've had readings with you. Definitely provide clarity of thought so yeah i, I actually really, really enjoy it and like it so it's great yeah they're helpful they're they are as well. that's that's very true it's so so they so are thank mm. you ever so much it's been great talking to you um cool. just like to say to to everyone if you've enjoyed these um episodes if you enjoy watching or listening to these stories real lives then please subscribe or hit the bell so you get notifications of when another broadcast is set to live. And um, thank you so much, Emma. Maybe we can do another one in a few months to see how sure. things have changed because as COVID yeah. changes, things will change. And it'd be really good to know, you know how that has affected you. Yeah, sounds like a plan. <laughs> thank you ever so much and have a great day. You're welcome. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.